Review, 2023 Mercedes GLC lives its best life with hardly any SUV in it. Before you get settled in with coffee and whatever attention span you're bringing to this internet party, the hard news, there's no AMG version, no plug-in hybrid, no inline, 6, not even a GLC coupe that's not a coupe. The 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC class has shown up, at long last, as the GLC 300 SUV, with or without all-wheel drive. It's still the handsome all-around player that fits somewhere between the GLA class and GLE class in the Benz lineup, with some of the same style and a lot of the same wagon replacement mission. Make no mistake, this is no Ersatz G-Class, the GLC, same as before, is a luxury car first, a do-it-all family shuttle second, and a performance vehicle in the offing, third. Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV Overview Sure, you could drive a BMW X3, or an Audi Q5, or even a Jaguar E-Pace and find some of the same pleasures in roughly the same order. But something about the GLC class carries it off better than the rest, and most of that something can be found inside. Is the Mercedes GLC a good-looking car? With looks similar to those of the smaller GLA class and some hints from the EQS electric sedan and all battery, all the time EQS SUV, the GLC hasn't taken this moment to break new styling ground. That's fine. It has a still charming turtle-shaped roof line that applies details with care, not with abandon. The thick handlebar mustache of chrome across its nose, do you see it as an homage to former chairman Dieter Zetsch or maybe that's just us, fastens to a grille studded by dozens of small stars, dominated by one big one. Somehow it's not overstated, and that's in keeping with the rest of the design, from the faint shoulder lines that bridge fender to fender until they reach the simple teardrop-shaped tail lights. Sublime or subdued, take your pick, the exterior's no match for the high-wattage cabin. The GLC posts up in its small Lux SUV class with a monster jam of a dash design. It bulges and flows in a waterfall of metallic or wood grain trim, elevates armrests to another plane with Remington razor trim, punches squared off turbine vents into the dash, and places an 11.9-inch touchscreen at the top of a gloss black obelisk that rises from the center console. It's what tombstones will look like in the year 2525, if we still use tombstones then. For now, it's a touch-tastic play space where Apple CarPlay runs full screen and where every speck of lint and Bucky's barbecue sauce reflects in dapples of sunlight, which hit the screen often because of the particular angle at which it reclines. How comfortable is the 2023 Mercedes GLC? The GLC class can shuttle with the best of its pack, too. It's always been on the bigger side of compact, now, with 2.4 inches more in length atop the same 113.1 inch wheelbase as before, the GLC doesn't just dress its space well, it extracts it well, too. It starts in front, where 16-way heated power seats find a swell driving position for most drivers. It's a long-distance trekker of the highest order. Still, I couldn't quite get the digital gauges entirely inside the multifunction steering wheel's top half. Synthetic leather feels like a cell phone here, but it's virtually a sure bet the AMG versions to come will have the real stuff. So does the glossy black trim on the console, which lifts fingerprints as well as any FBI agent I've interacted with, total count to date, too, functionally the center console has its issues, the smartphone charging pad inside it tucks well up under the console, even with the lid open. Clearly, Mercedes engineers want you to put the phone down. The cup holders are fine if you drink normal-sized beverages. The toaster-sized console bin can hold at least one package of English muffins, though it can't get them crispy. Special kudos go out to the GLC's back seat. It's almost ready for prime SUV time, for adults fit easily, a fifth sits well enough for a longer trip, and those same fussy engineers who have issues with snapchatting and driving found tow room and headroom for everyone in row 2. And since there's no third row seat, they found a way for the 21.9 cubic feet of cargo space to transform into 59.3 cubic feet. It's something they call folding the seat down. It sounds technical. How fast is the Mercedes GLC? What also sounds technical, and is, is the GLC's running gear. 
you don't need a mechanical degree to understand that the rear drive GLC can be fitted with a system that also grants its power to the front wheels, you might even call it all-wheel drive. The GLC has it, but don't get it twisted, this is a crossover with some SUV hardware tossed in the mix, so its speciality is in all-weather traction. It can handle any weather, and it can pull itself into and out of most traffic situations with aplomb, thanks to one of the smoothest Mercedes four-cylinders in memory. It's a 258 horsepower 2.0 liter turbo, for that spins out 295 pound foot of torque. Its integrated mild hybrid system makes it even smoother and stronger by adding another 23 horsepower and 148 pound foot of torque when needed, like from a stoplight start, where the GLC pulls cleanly and quickly off the stripe. Mercedes promises a 60 miles per hour run in 6.2 seconds, top speed of 130 miles per hour, and fuel economy as high as 28 miles per gallon combined, I saw better than that on the flattest east-west-east run across the Gulf Coast. The GLC ships its power around via a 9-speed automatic, a very good gearbox despite the occasional hiccup before it selects the low gear and ardent right foot wants now, right now. The GLC's drive modes can scare that hiccup away, Spun into sport mode the GLC drops its party manners and keeps the revs high and keeps the shifter on a short lease, snipping off downshifts like a physician clicks their pen when they write a refill for your lattice prescription. Take heart, there's a support group for everything, even those slighted in the eyelash department. It's nowhere near AMG territory in power, for sure, and the GLC stock tuning hasn't gotten the good word yet either. Still, it's impossible to fault a vehicle with the GLC's comfort-driven absolutism. With a 4-link front and a 5-link rear suspension, the GLC hasn't yet adopted all the tech wizardry that can cope with a lot more power, things like air springs. It doesn't need them. On its standard 18-inch 235-60 all-season tires, or even on the 19-inch combo on my press vehicle, the GLC has the right amount of bend in its knees. Ride over long bumps and it picks up a spring in its step, but settles down quickly before it bobbles or, worse, stiffens in horror at its laps. It's resolutely silken even when sport mode applies about 20% more weight to its electronic power steering and when the shifting gets more intentional. Lope along I tend to a marsh front cage in place and back via swampy two-laners, and the GLC wants to go back for another round of redfish nuggets. Sure, we all want the AMG edition now, but if we had to choose which GLC to drive every day, it's difficult to see the justification for more than the GLC 300. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.